Can you tell this airplane by its shape or this helicopter or this jet? We're going to be talking about aircraft shapes in this episode of Celebrating Aviation Art with Mike Machat. This is the Cessna Skymaster. This is the Bell Huey helicopter. And this is the Lockheed U-2 high altitude surveillance aircraft. But here we have two legendary World War II fighters, the F-4 Corsair and the P-38 Lightning. Now looking at them in color, it's not hard to tell them uh, apart or identify them, but look at just the shapes alone. And there's no doubt what these airplanes are. In the jet age, these airplanes are referred to as the Century Series, a family of supersonic Air Force aircraft. And when these airplanes were first introduced in the 1950s, a photograph was taken from a helicopter looking down on all six jets parked on the ramp in a circle referred to as the Century Circle. What's interesting is in this graphic, you can see what each airplane is. Airliners come in all different shapes and sizes as well. Here we have some profile silhouettes of airliners from different eras, some flying boats in there as well. What this was, uh, was a project showing a fleet of airplanes, all 50 types used by Pan American World Airways from 1927 to 1991 in scale. Pretty impressive group of machines. A plan view or top view is used uh, very effectively, and this is a Lockheed 1649 Constellation. A profile view is a side view. And uh, we're going to talk about how each of these can be used to best effect. For instance, can you guess the shape of this airplane in plan view? It's the first released photo of the Republic F-105 Thunder Chief and it was used on purpose to disguise much of the airplane structure. So take a look at it. Take a look at the wing root and the tail. Can you figure out what this would look like from top or bottom? It looks like this. I've always said that the F-105 was kind of the uh, poster boy for how different an airplane can look. It's the same airplane. Looks like three different airplanes from either view, front, plan, or profile. Here's another one, the Boeing B-52 Strato Fortress. Take a good look. Can you tell how many engines it has? Not really. How about that? Here's another one, the Vought F-7U Cutlass, twin tail fighter, early 50s. And there it is, pretty futuristic looking airplane. And my favorite, the Lockheed YF-12A, early member of the Blackbird family, this was the first released photo to the public, September of 1965. And I remember as a, a teenager looking at this uh, photograph as a two-page spread in Life magazine, and I couldn't for the life of me figure out what this airplane looked like or what the wings shape was or whatever. And again, this view was used on purpose to disguise the structure of the airplane. Are you ready? In plan view, it looks like this. All right, speaking of Lockheed airplanes, for all you airline geeks out there, this is an Electra Air Cal uh, on, a, on its way from Orange County Airport up to Lake Tahoe in uh, the late 1970s. And this is the photo that actually inspired this uh, presentation uh, right now, because I remember looking at this shape and unmistakable as the Electra. Uh, some people said P3 Orion, but it doesn't have the uh, mad boom on the tail. And so this would be a Lockheed L-188. Electra coming into land, identified from its shape. Of course, you got the spinner at upper right, but uh, here's the Electra in plan view, beautiful airplane. And uh, compare this turboprop to uh, the first jet in the early jet age of commercial aviation, the Boeing 707. Four engine swept wing conventional tail airplane. Can you pick the 707 out of the lineup? It's the one in the middle. On the left, we have the Douglas DC-8. On the right, the Convert 880. And I'm showing this to you because, uh, again, you've got to be 
uh, pretty up on your aircraft identification uh, to determine which one is which. I have a video that tells uh, you how do you uh, how to identify all these different airplanes, and I'll put a link uh, to that video at the end of this uh, program. Military airplanes come in very distinctive shapes. Here we have a T-33 banking away. And if you take that silhouette, this becomes the beginning of the official Air Force or aircraft identification system. Uh, this was a book published in World War II, the Aeronautics Aircraft Spotters Handbook. And this was kind of the Bible for uh, civil defense uh, workers or people needing to identify what aircraft looked like from their shapes. So in World War II, they had the WEFT ID system, which basically stood for wings, engines, fuselage, and tail. And by uh, combining these four elements, you could pretty much identify an airplane. For instance, here we have a single engine, low wing, uh, conventional tail fighter uh, with a round fuselage in the front and a pointed fuselage at the tail. Can you identify this airplane? It's the German FW-190. Let's try another one. Mid-wing, twin-engine, conventional tail, elliptical fuselage. You think you have it? Douglas A-20 Havoc, seen here on the ramp at Santa Monica with the proud workers of the Douglas Aircraft Company. And finally, a four-engine, high-wing, twin-tail fuselage uh, bomber. Can you guess? Consolidated B-24. All right, we have shapes and model box art. This is really cool because the shape of the airplanes uh, were so identifiable on these uh, cover illustrations. For instance, uh, I've spoken before about a vertical shape uh, connotes power and strength. A horizontal shape is uh, calm or peace or rest. And diagonal shapes uh, evoke action excitement, speed, drama. So box art rule number one, don't ever use a dead flat front, rear, top or bottom view of an airplane in an action packed composition on a model cover. Box art rule number two, you know you've made it in art when you can break the rules. And who better to demonstrate this than the great Jack Lenwood? So here's a dead front view of an Avro Lancaster. What's Jack going to do with this? Well, he's going to put it in the upper right-hand corner of a cover for the ME262 kit. And here you've got the Lanx uh, diving in on the jet, which is firing it. Who knows? It's one of those covers where you just look at it and you got to buy the model. But look at that upper right. It's a dead front view. Here's another one. Rear view of an ME109 with the proper rudder input, of course. And that's the cover of the P-51B. And I think that's what they refer to as a near miss. How could that even be possible? But uh, Jack could make it happen. And finally, a flat bottom view of a Spitfire Mark I. What's that noise I hear? It sounds like somebody yelling with uh, joy. That would have to be Max in Florida, my friend, who runs Max's Models, the greatest model YouTube channel. If you haven't uh, seen it, please check it out. Max always said this was one of his, if not his favorite, Ravel box top. But again, a bottom view employed with other airplanes to bring uh, your eye into the composition. Pretty cool. I remember growing up in the early 50s uh, during the beginning of the Cold War uh, and looking at uh, photos of Russian airplanes, or uh, I should say air aircraft from the Soviet Union, here we have a MiG-15 used in the Korean War, and it, this is a pretty good photo. It's got a lot of detail. But the way we would see it back in those days uh, would be like in a, an article in Time or Newsweek magazine about the new Russian jets. And it would look like this. Everything was airbrushed out. It was kind of the spy photo. And you get a rough idea what it looked like. But when you look at the uh, Russian airplanes in plan view, uh, things get pretty uh, dramatic. For instance, here's the MiG-17, an amazing uh, identifiable shape. And the MiG-19, you can see the progress in aeronautical design. Here's the MiG-21 and the MiG-23. So these shapes really tell a story. Now, aerodynamics are very important. And in the jet age, uh, streamlining was of the utmost. 
And here you have a uh, prototype F-84 Thunderstreak uh, looking down and you can see the swept wing and the, uh, the shape of the fuselage. This was a subsonic or transonic airplane. And uh, once the supersonic age arrived, uh, shapes changed. And so now here you have the area rule fuselage this is on the Convair F-106. Or here you have a Navy F-11 F Tiger, again, with what they called the Coke bottle fuselage. And this uh, allowed the airplanes to achieve supersonic speed. So talk about shape. I have a question for you. How could an airplane like this even fly? Weren't aerodynamics, aerodynamics important? Well, this is the F-117, first generation stealth fighter. And the answer to the question, how could it fly? With a digital flight control system. But it was a subsonic airplane. So here's the F-35 Lightning II, which is capable of speeds up to Mach 1.6. But uh, look at the structure underneath the airplane. It's uh, pretty complex. So what's the secret for this airplane's success? It would be the engine. There's a lot of power. Pratt & Whitney PW-135 turbofan produces 43,000 pounds of thrust in afterburner, which is almost twice what a Century Series fighter could produce. So looking at the shapes of airplanes through history, it's quite a story from the 1930s the 1940s, into the jet age, the supersonic era, and aircraft up until the end of the 20th century, all identified from their distinctive and dramatic shapes. So there you have it, a look at shapes in aircraft and how you can use those to identify them, and uh, just the overall beauty of the airplanes captured in silhouette, uh, really a, a nice form of the art. Hope you enjoyed this episode of Celebrating Aviation Art with Mike Machette. I thank you for watching. Uh, would love to have you as a subscriber if you're not already on board. And uh, as ever, uh, please uh, uh, make sure you hit the like uh, icon and uh, help us out with the channel. So again, thank you for watching. And until next time, take care.